Hello, my name is Kevin M. Ryan and I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Chemical and Environmental Sciences at the University of Limerick in Ireland. Here we are going to discuss the perspective we recently published in Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters titled Occurrence of Polytypism in Compound Colloidal Metal Chalcogonide Nanocrystals. Polymorphism is the ability of a solid material to occur in different crystal forms. For example, zinc sulphide. It is an ionic crystal formed by close packing of sulphide anions where the smaller zinc ions occupy half the tetrahedral interstitial spaces. Depending on how the close packing occurs give rise to different crystal forms. If the layer stacking repeats every fourth layer, known as ABC-ABC packing, then the type of packing is cubic and the crystal structure is zinc blend. Whereas if the stacking repeats every third layer, which is ABAB packing, the, this is called hexagonal close packing and the crystal structure is wurzite. Normally a solid will occur in one or other crystal form. However, in cases, these polymorphic forms can coexist in a single particle, giving rise to what is termed polytypism. These polytypic crystals have one or more interfaces shared by these crystal structures, which gives rise to a new stacking sequence such as ABC slash AB or AB slash CBA. Interestingly, the phenomenon of polytypism is more common in nanocrystals than bulk materials. Um, and this arises because the energy barrier between growth in the different polymorphic forms is much lower at the nanoscale. This therefore allows the spontaneous occurrence of polytypism in nanocrystals, which affects their morphology and their physical properties. For example, for the formation of a three-dimensional branch shape in metal chalcogonide nanocrystals, the nucleation occurs in a zinc blend structure having cubic packing. This nucleating seed terminates into 111 facets having similar lattice spacing to the 002 plane of the Wurzite structure. The anisotropic Wurzite growth extension from these 111 facets of zinc blend create the final tetrapod or octopod shape depending on the number of active 111 facets, which can be 4 for the tetrapod or 8 for the octopod. Opposite to these branch structures, polytypes arising from nucleation in the Wurzite phase with subsequent growth in the zinc blend are always linear 1D structures. In Wurzite structure, there are two opposite 002 facets that can allow transition to the epitaxial growth of zinc blend tips. Additionally, the reactivity of these 002 facets differ, which give access to localised zinc blend tips selectively to one or both ends of the Wurzite core. Studies over the past one and a half decades by different research groups have shown that control over polymorphism is critical for the evolution of shape morphology as you go from zero dimensional quantum dots to three dimensional branch structures in the colloidal nanocrystal system. In this perspective, we have tried to answer the important questions, such as how to selectively control the phases during nucleation and growth to obtain the desired shape, how the structural differences within a single nanocrystal affect the intrinsic properties, and finally, how these polytypic structures could be exploited for real-life devices. Hi, my name is Shalini Singh. Synthesis of polytypic nanocrystal via colloidal approach requires a very fine balance between the different control factors involved in the reaction kinetics temperature, latent chemistry, presence of impurities, and choice of precursor and the reactivity as well. Let's start with one of the most important parameters, temperature. The temperature range for colloidal synthesis generally lies between room temperature to 350 degrees Celsius. In this range, temperature zones for nucleation and growth could be separated by hot injection approach. For 2,6 materials, when the nucleation happened at low temperature, kinetically favored zinc blend phases formed, and high temperature growth process leads to the extension of the shape in thermodynamically more stable worldside phase. This ultimately leads to the formation of tetrapods or octopod kind of structure. But when the system is multi-component copper chalcogenides, low temperature nucleation and high temperature growth result in linear polytypic structures, as the worldside phase here is kinetically stable and it's nucleated first. To tune the phase selection at particular temperature, ligands play an important part. They not only are involved in breaking the inversion symmetry of the crystal structure, but also in controlling the epitaxial growth of the phases as well as the tuning the dimensions of the different segments. The most common ligands used in our kind of systems are alkyl phosphonic acids, the phosphenes, alkyl amines or the carboxylic acids. The interaction between these ligands and the ion precursor Decide further the rate of nucleation, the number of nuclei formed during the nucleation, which ultimately affects the final morphology of the nanocrystals. 
by carefully selecting the ligands and the metal precursors which are compatible with each other and also the temperature windows for nucleation and growth, the shape, size, phase ratios and also the monodispersity could be very nicely controlled in polytypic nanocrystals. The wide range of control parameters and complex chemistry makes polytypes interesting and at the same time very challenging structures in colloidal nanocrystal chemistry. A better understanding of this phenomenon would not only help to control their occurrence, but would also allow design of new materials with novel properties that benefit from polytypic transformations. For example, variations in band structure for the different phases allow independent tuning of thermal and electrical conductivity to maximize the Seebeck coefficient. The branch shapes also lead to shape-dependent properties not attainable with single crystal structures, such as applications of tetrapods in photovoltaics. Ultimately, controlled polytypic transformations in nanocrystals offer exciting opportunities for materials design, where complex branch nanostructures can be defined across a range of materials compositions. They can be assembled into superstructures and thereby demonstrate heretofore unachievable properties. For further information, I'd encourage you to read the perspective. Uh, the link is given below, and also to visit our group website, which is www.nanoresearchul.org. Thank you.